All right, we can get started at six o'clock. I know people want to get to dinner or whatever they have going on. I just want to welcome everybody to our Student Choice Student Loan uh, Seminar. Today we are joined with Suzanne and she will be going over student loans and refinancing and everything that you need to know. She does have a lot to go over, so if you could just put your questions in the chat, we will be sure to answer them um, kind of near the end and get through as many as we can. Um, and right now I'm gonna turn it over to Suzanne. Thank you very much. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. A little bit about myself. Um, again, my name is Suzanne Wilkins. Um, I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships for Student Choice which is a company that partners with Dutch Point Credit Union to uh, bring to you student loans and student loan refinancing. So tonight we're going to be talking about a few topics uh, regarding student loan financing, because uh, as most of us uh, have experienced in the past, uh, this is a big unknown for a lot of people. Where do you start? How do you find some information? Do you, you know, could do, you know, you want to make the right choices when you you decide to refinance. So we're going to be talking today um, about um, different topics, such as, you know, giving you an update on what's going on on the federal student loan side, because uh, this year and this past uh, couple of years have been a roller coaster for all of us in regards to student loans and what the government is doing. We also will talk a little bit about um, understanding your loans, because I think that's really important to understand what you have in order to decide if you want to refinance. And coupled with that is getting your loan terms and requirements, where to get that so that you can compare apples to apples, right? And then we're going to show you a little bit, uh, you know, a couple of examples of doing your own math on your own loans, right? So is it worth refinancing now or should I wait later? And then we have some tips for paying off your student loans earlier. Um, again, you can take it or leave it. It's just things that, you know, in the industry, we've come across some people doing it and um, paying off those loans uh, a little bit faster. So let's talk a little bit uh, today about the federal student loan update and what's been going on with student loans and COVID, right? So back in March of 2020, um, the Department of Education and, and um, the uh, acting president signed into law the CARES Act. Uh, so basically what this law did was provide relief on all of those uh, federal student loans. So no payments were collected, interest uh, stopped accruing on these loans. Uh, collections also stopped on these loans. And um, the expiration date on uh, the CARES Act was kicked down the road a couple of times. Uh, so now, right now, it's it's set to expire. Um, and I believe that there is, um, it's set to expire August of uh, August 31st of this year. Now, I get a lot of questions asking me if the federal government is going to, um, you know, kick the can again down the road. My guess, if I was a betting woman, I would say yes. But again, this is crystal balling it. And there's nothing uh, that I'm reading that says, yes, they will extend that expiration date out to the end of the year or another couple of months. Uh, but my guess is that it, it will probably happen. Um, so I would suggest all of you on the call become very familiar with the following website that I have on the bottom of this uh, deck, this slide. It's studentaid.gov slash coronavirus. You'll be able to get uh, up-to-date information from this. Um, and also studentaid.gov, just that site alone is a lot of good information for consumers on not just the student loan refinance, but also uh, federal student loans. So um, just, uh, you know, just to get you in the, in, in the loop on that. 
Now, there's also a lot of talk, uh, and you probably have heard a lot of this in the media, uh, about a public service loan forgiveness program, uh, the PSLF program. And what this does is that it gives, um, uh, you know, members or, or members as yourself that have federal student loans relief after making 10 years of qualified monthly payments under a qualifying repayment plan working for a qualifying employer. Now, prior to this current administration, it was very difficult um, to qualify for something, public service debt forgiveness. Less than 1% of the population actually qualified. So the Department of Education, when they took a look at the CARES Act and they and they looked to see how they could help people um, during this time uh, of COVID, they decided that they were going to relax some of those parameters, um, and they're relaxing it until the end of October of this year. Okay, so more people will now be able to qualify, and those qualifying payments that um, didn't count last time someone uh, applied for this might qualify this time around. Okay, so it's really important that if you think you qualify for public service debt forgiveness, that you reach out uh, to your servicer to see if you can qualify. Um, again, if you want more information on public service loan forgiveness, uh, go to studentaid.gov slash PSLF waiver, okay? Again, are they gonna kick that expiration date down the road? I have no idea. I haven't heard anything. Usually I hear some rumors about this. I haven't heard anything on this one. So I just want you to be aware um, of uh, those websites uh, that will answer those questions to you um, in the future. Now, there's also a lot of talk in the media about federal loan benefits, okay? And what are they? So there are basically four types of loan benefits. This is, again, for only federal loans, not private student loans, just the federal loans. And you have to understand that if you refinance a, a federal loan into a private student loan, you give up all of these benefits. So we're gonna go through the benefits, but please remember that if you decide to refinance into a private student loan, you give up all of these benefits, so to speak. So the first one is a public service loan forgiveness program, which I just talked about on the previous slide. Okay, I'm not gonna belabor that. But there's also the teacher loan forgiveness program for those that teach in a full-time designated school or educational service agency that serve low-income families. They may qualify for up to $17,500 in forgiveness after making five years uh, of, of payments. Now, again, you have to check uh, with your servicer and you have to get certified every year when you go into these debt forgiveness programs. So make sure that you have a lot of good open communication with your loan servicers on this. And whenever you communicate with your loan servicers, make sure you get it in writing in an email. Uh, I have a lot of borrowers that call uh, and talk to their servicers and they might misunderstand what the servicer is saying, or the servicer might, um, you know, there there have been servicers in the past that aren't above board. And uh, then, you know, you sort of, the clock restarts on some of these countdowns, right? So always get something in writing from the servicers. Um, there's also income-based repayment uh, programs. And I, this is probably the most popular in the media. Um, so these are, this is basically for those that anticipate or experiencing financial hardship as defined by the federal government. So you can qualify to have the, your monthly payments capped at 15% of your discretionary income. Then any remaining balance is forgiven after making 25 years of eligible payments. Okay, so... Um, this is something uh, that I, I would caution people about, especially uh, borrowers who are just graduating. Some borrowers that just graduate can make payments, no problem. But what I've seen servicers do 
is put them in this income-based repayment program automatically, or maybe a borrower doesn't understand what income-based repayment means. And basically what this means is, yes, they're giving you a break on your monthly payments uh, at 15% of your discretionary income, but you're ultimately paying more money in interest and might extend that term out. Usually federal uh, loans, their regular term's 10 years. Um, so if you go into an income-based repayment plan, that 10 years could easily go into 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, right? Depending on the circumstances. So if you don't need it, don't take it. Uh, that's my uh, advice to you. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, students that come out who graduate that are having problems. That's great. Use this, but then make sure you get out of it as soon as you can, right? Um, and then Finally, there's the pay as you earn uh, benefit. So those with high federal debt relative to their income could qualify to have their monthly payments capped at 10% of their discretionary income. Then any remaining balance is forgiven after 20 years. Now, that's, you know, again, all well and good if you're seriously in financial hardship. Um, but just understand that after 20 years, if there is a remaining balance left, um, you would probably have to account for that in your income tax as income, right? It's just not written off and forgotten about. So make sure you understand that as well. Now, before I go on to the next slide, I think uh, it's, it's also important to talk a little bit about what's going on in the industry is in terms of what the Biden administration is lo looking to do. So there, again, a lot has been said in the media about this um, and, and that Biden is seriously considering um, uh, giving $10,000 in debt forgiveness to anyone that has federal debt which would be great if that happened. And uh, if if and when that day does happen, I would go to that studentaid.gov uh, site to make sure that you understand you know, how you get that $10,000 forgiven. For those of you that are thinking about refinancing, um, that's just something to consider. You might not want to you know, move that federal loan, $10,000, of it over to a private student loan, just keep it as a federal debt and maybe you refinance everything else if it makes sense for you. Now, um, if, it, if it does make sense, that's the big question. How do you know? And we'll talk a little bit more about that and the resources that you will have uh, in, in order to make that decision. So um, now the, the next thing that I also wanted to touch base on is I've been talking a lot about servicers, right? There are many federal loan servicers out there. And it's basically a loan servicer is just a company that processes your student loan payments. They will um, answer any questions that you have in relation to your student loan. They're basically your lifeline after you uh, the funds have been dispersed. They're the ones that are in charge of your loan. Um, now, the most popular servicers out there are Navient, Granite State, Cornerstone, Fed Loans. And a lot of these federal loan servicers um, will stop servicing federal loans, or they have stopped servicing federal loans uh, like late last year, and a lot of them are stopping this year. So what happens with that is they're going to transfer the servicing rights over to new servicers. And I just wanted to provide you with the new servicers names here so that you become familiar uh, with them. So what happens if you do have a new servicer? You know, do you even have to worry about it? My answer would be yes. I would be concerned about the servicer change. Um, again, uh, just find out which company is servicing your loan um, and understand your student loan type. So uh, you'll you'll understand it more on the federal lo uh, student loan side. The private student loans they're mostly serviced by um, third party um, uh, servicers like UAS. 
um, that are really not effective. Um, but what I would ask you to do is continue to make your payments to your current servicer until you actually receive a notice from the Department of Education. They'll notify you in writing of any servicer change. Once you get that new servicer, make sure you update all your automatic payment information with them. And if you're in an income-driven repayment plan, make sure that that information transitions over correctly. So make sure you take a snapshot of what it is now. And then uh, when the servicer change happens, make sure you contact that new servicer to make sure that everything transferred over correctly. Uh, the last thing that you want uh, to have happen is uh, something not transfer over and then you get disqualified from a program and then your um, clock has to start from, you know, ground zero all over again. So um, just a few tips uh, in that regard. So when you decide uh, to refinance your loans, you really have to understand what your loan type is and what the terms are. So where do you start? You know, a lot of times borrowers don't understand if they have federal uh, debt or if they have private student loan debt or both. Uh, I hear that all the time, very common. So we have to understand the difference before we make the decision to refinance a loan. So how do you figure out if you have uh, federal student loans? Well, the, per, the first place that you should go to is the studentaid.gov site. You're going to either have to log in or create a new uh, FSA ID account. So usually a lot of us have FSA IDs already because we had to fill out the FAFSA while we were in college. But if you don't, you can always go in and, and uh, create a new uh, ID. And then there you'll see a dashboard and you'll be able to see everything that you have through the federal student loan program. Um, so basically all federal student loans are pumped through what we call the National Student Loan Data System, uh, which we call for short N nslds.ed.gov site if you wanted to go in there. So either go to the studentaid.gov site and sign on or go into the nslds.ed.gov site and you'll see all your federal student loans there. Um, once you're there, I would encourage you to get your current balance and your repayment term. So how much uh, of a term was it originally and how many, uh, term, uh, how many payments do you have left? What is your interest rate? Is it a subsidized loan? or an unsubsidized loan, okay? So uh, a subsidized loan basically states that the government pays the interest while the student is in school. An unsubsidized loan means that the, the student basically is responsible for interest accrued on that loan. What is your monthly payment? And what is your servicer's contact information? All of these things you're going to need to know when you apply to refinance a, um, a student loan. Um, now, don't forget of uh, the benefits that you have. Um, you know, I did mention it, uh, that you have loan cancellation. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that there is also loan cancellation for death and disability. Um, on the federal student loan side. Your private student loans do not have that feature, okay? So that's important to note. Um, so once you have that information, um, you're going to also discover that same information on your private student loan side, okay? So how do you know if you have private student loans? Well, there are a few different places that you can go. Um, I would always recommend uh, going to the university of where you graduated from, uh, talk to the financial aid office. They should be able to tell you federal student loans and any private student loans you had, also any scholarships that you had. Um, they have it all there. The only problem with financial aid offices is it depends on when you get them, right? So right now, federal uh, financial aid offices are super busy in the months of June, July, uh, and August because they are preparing for new students on campus. So their focus is on that. So they might not return phone calls in a timely manner. Um, so you can either reach out to them 
or you can go to annualcreditreport.com. This is where you can get um, credit reports from Experience, uh, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Uh, you'll uh, be able to see your private student loans on that. And plus, it's, it's good to pull your credit report every so often anyway to see what's out there. So again, get your information uh, that you need, current balance, repayment term, interest rate, uh, servicer information, all of that. Now, uh, the benefits on a private student loan, they vary by lender because every lender's uh, private student loan is set by that lender. It's not by the Department of Education. So they might decide to give a certain specialized benefit, uh, such as a quarter percent rate reduction. Um, so you'd have to check into that. Um, there are co-signer release options from private student loans. So typically a private student loan is taken out in the student's name with a co-borrower, usually a parent. And um, usually that co-signer can be released after either four years or five years of um, uninterrupted on-time payments, right? So you need to understand that. Um, they, are, they do give forbearance options, especially if you go back into school. Um, if you reach out to them, they usually can uh, give you a forbearance and relief from that monthly payment. Uh, they do have what's called graduated repayment options. So what this is, and again, I would only caution you to use this if you're in financial hardship. So what it does is that it's only offered usually once right after graduation. And it takes your monthly payment, and let's say your term is either 20 or 25 years on that private student loan. And it'll extend that term out for 40 years to make those payments super tiny small for you to you know, uh, get back in line with your expense, expense budget. And after two years time, the amortiz amortization schedule reverts back to either 18 years or 23 years. Um, again, I would only use this if I was in financial hardship and I was looking to protect my credit. I would not use this if I had a job coming out of uh, college and that I could pay my debt on time, no problem. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, share with you what graduated repayment options are. Um, and then, of course, refinance options are, are always available for private student loans. Now, uh, a little bit about federal the federal consolidation solution that the Department of Education offers you. Um, we see that it, it does not offer, uh, it does not have any origination or processing fees or disbursement fees. So that's a good thing. And you can consolidate your federal student loans only with them uh, for a term of up to 30 years. Now, remember, all federal student loans uh, usually have a term of 10 years. Uh, so now you're going from 10 years to 30 years. So just, you know, yeah, you're, you might be getting a break on those monthly payments, but the term is really extended out a long time. Um, the fixed rate, and on federal student loans, all rates are fixed. Um, the, the fixed rate is calculated on a weighted average of loans that are consolidated. So let's say you have a loan that's at, uh, 3% and another loan that's at 7%, they're going to weight out the, those averages. So that's important for you to know. Um, there's usually no co-signer. There are no, excuse me, there's no co-signers on the federal consolidation loan. They do give a quarter percent rate discount with automatic payments, and there's no credit or income verified on the federal consolidation solution. But again, if I if I had to pull anything out of this slide, I would just caution you uh, that they can consolidate up to 30 years on this. And do you want to be tied down for 30 years? Um, now, private student loans are a little bit different animal. Again, there's usually no origination fees on this, processing fees or disbursement fees. And, you know, I might have seen one uh, institution that might have charged someone an origination fee. They called it a supplemental fee instead of an origination fee. But usually there are no fees associated with it. The terms on um, student uh, private student loan refinances can be either five, 10 or 15 years. 
And private uh, student loan refinance uh, institutions can offer either a fixed rate or a variable rate. Fixed rate meaning the rates will never change uh, during the course of the loan. And variable rates means that uh, usually the rates can fluctuate depending on um, an index that they're tied to, usually prime rate. OK, so you would have to ask yourself questions about, OK, if I if I get myself into a variable rate and sometimes it's it's good to get into a variable rate if the if the rate's low enough, um, how many times could they change this rate on me? Is it once a month? Is it once a quarter? Is it once a year? Um, so those are the things, the questions that you have to ask yourself before you get into an application. Um, private uh, student loan refinance, you can refinance federal student loans, private student loans, and institutional student loans. Another student loan that you can also refinance into is that parent loan, that PLUS loan. So if I recently graduated and my parents took out a PLUS loan for me on, on my behalf, and, and don't forget PLUS loans, um, the students are never on these PLUS loans. It's 100% on the shoulders of the parents. So if I graduated and my parents took out a, a PLUS loan for me and I'm making good money and I can afford to take that debt back I can refinance that debt into this refinance loan, okay? Now, with the private uh, loan refinance, there are underwriting criteria that you do have to meet. Um, we're going to pull a credit report on you. We're going to verify income on you. There might be other stipulations. Debt to income ratios uh, will be calculated on you. So if you don't fit that underwriting criteria right away, we might ask you for a cosigner on this. Now, the cosigner could be anyone that is qualified credit wise. So um, also uh, private student loan refinances offer a quarter percent rate discounts, usually with automatic payments. Um, so just keep those factors in mind when you go shopping um, in the future for that. Now, Dutch Point is going to be offering a student loan refinance program pretty soon. Um, they're very excited about it. They're going to be launching it within the next, uh, I would say, you know, two to three weeks, maybe, um, maybe sooner, hopefully. Uh, so uh, they are going to offer uh, a refinance program that has no origination fees. Wonderful. Um, their rates uh, are going to be uh, either fixed or variable for either five, 10 or 15 years. And again, you'll be able to refinance uh, all of those um, private, federal, institutional loans, um, and PLUS loans in that. Um, their minimum loan um, uh, requirement will be 5,000 and the maximum you could get is up to $50,000. They will uh, give you a quarter percent rate reduction um, for automatic payments. And they do offer a co-borrower release option after 48 months of consecutive on-time payments. So for those of us that are parents that are trying to gear up for um, retirement, that might be a really interesting uh, proposition for you when you take a look at that. Um, now, they do, again, have qualifications, underwriting criteria. Um, a co-borrower basically is not required unless you can't fulfill those underwriting criteria needs. They're going to be looking for two years of verifiable income, and the debt-to-income ratio will will not be able to exceed 45%. So there will be a cutoff score on credit reports of 660 or greater. And uh, you must be uh, uh, having an income, a monthly income of at least $3,000. Um, no bankruptcy uh, in the last five years and no student loan defaults for the last seven years. So that's a little bit of a peek under the hood on what their qualifications are. Um, when they uh, when uh, when they do launch in in a few weeks time. Um, now let's talk a little bit about uh, how uh, you would compare the apples or apples to apples, right? And there are a lot of good calculators out there uh, on the internet, but I would recommend that you go to your credit union's uh, website 
and I have it on this slide, dutchpoint.studentchoice.org slash refinance slash calculator. And uh, what it does is it really, uh, you know, shows you how much you can save, right? So that's, you know, the ultimate goal is we don't want to be paying extra interest than that, and then we don't have to, right? So this will, you know, you 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 input, you know, your current balance, your rate, your term, uh, your current payment amount, uh, and then it could, could push back to you uh, how much you could save with that credit union. Now we do have a few examples of um, how it can change basically your life. We have what we call, uh, and if you go to that uh, dutchpoint.studentchoice.org uh, uh, site, there's also another tool that you can search for called our, cal uh, our college access counselor. And what she can do is she can either walk you through this, she can have, you can schedule a, a phone appointment with her. She has her schedule out there on the internet. Uh, also, you can email her with any questions uh, that you can come up with um, regarding your own situation. But what she does is she takes members from all of our clients across the country. She's not a salesperson. She just helps you with those questions. And these are real life examples of how she's helped people and how it's it's super interesting uh, to, to have you know like these conversations uh, and to, to see how much you can save. So this example, uh, this member had three federal direct unsubsidized loans totaling 27,600. He had also two federal parent plus loans. His parents had $67,000 in outstanding debt. Uh, the interest rates ranged anywhere from 6.8 to 7.9. Uh, the term, uh, there's a, there was a 10 year term with eight years remaining. Um, and his objectives were to lower interest rates and terms and take over responsibility of that federal plus loan from his parents. So again, uh, under uh, letter A, you can see his monthly payment was $1,311. Total interest that he was paying out is $30,998. So what this, um, with the college access counselor, with the help of their credit union, they refinanced for five years. Yes, it did increase his monthly payment, but look how much he saved because he brought his interest rates down to 3.45%. So now he's only paying a total interest of $8,552. Now, I think, and you know, I, I'm I'm a culprit of this. I think we do sometimes get complacent with our, our student loans, right? I have a few student loans for my daughter out there. And I, you know, I, I'm guilty of it. You know, it's, it's out there. I don't have to worry about it, but how much money am I paying out in interest, especially in this interest rate environment that we're living in? Um, what's my interest rate? And, you know, can I make it better before, you know, rates start increasing and creeping up and creeping up with the prime rate, right? So um, I think it's really important to take a look um, and, and have that phone call with our college access counselor, which by the way, is free through your credit union. So anyone uh, that calls, whether they're members or non-members, uh, can get the service free of charge to them. Now, this next example I thought was interesting as well. So this member had six federal direct subsidized and unsubsidized loan totaling $23,460. The interest rates range anywhere from 3.6 to 5.23. That was the fixed rates. Uh, and they had a 10-year term with nine years remaining. The th they also had three private student loans totaling $32,330. And you can see the interest rates range anywhere from three and a quarter to 4.6. Those were the variable rates. So they had 14 years remaining on a term of 15 years, okay? The borrower was enrolling into graduate school the next academic year. So what did the college access counselor tell them to do? Don't refinance because um, both the federal and the private student loans may be deferred while the student is in graduate school. Federal subsidized loans may not accrue interest while in deferment. Okay, so that's another plus. And private loans now have low interest rates and manageable monthly payments. So um, 
the option was to refinance after graduate school. So there's a lot of turns and twists that you have to be cognizant of when you um, you know think about refinancing your student loans. And again, you know we take the question marks out of it uh, out of the equation for you. We'll be happy to recommend which direction you should go uh, because there's a lot a lot to this. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about tips. And again, these are just suggestions and some of them may be totally obvious to you and others may not be as obvious, but it's good to mention it. Like uh, a lot of times, um, you know, some borrowers don't understand that they can make more than the minimum payment. And when they do, it decreases their principal balance. So it, it shortens that overall term, right? So that's why it's critical to find the payoff date when you're talking to guidance, uh, you know, college access counselors. Um, maybe use a cash windfall. Uh, let's say if you get a rebate from your tax returns, you put that down on your student loan. The name of the game is to pay off this debt as soon as you can because it can be very stifling, right? Um, take a job that offers debt forgiveness. Now we talked about the federal government offering forgiveness. But there are some HR departments now that are getting very aggressive in how they attract talent, the HR talent. And some of them are chipping in money for student loan payments or allowing debt forgiveness, a portion of that loan, depending on how long you work for them. So I encourage um, recent graduates to ask the HR um, department to see if they have programs. Um, if you get raises, you know, uh, instead of spending that raise on having, a, you know, a better time out there and, uh, you know, more dinners or movies, um, maybe act like you don't get a raise and put that raise towards your student loans. Um, again, avoid those repayment programs unless you really need them and you're trying to protect your credit because protecting your credit is also the name of the game. And then, um, you know, make sure you trim your budget. Uh, try to cut as much as you can to pay these student loans uh, down and uh, earn extra extra money with additional jobs and, and, and put all of that money directly on um, the student loan. Uh, take advantage of any interest rate reductions through the government or tax um, deductions or credits. I would always ask uh, your CPA firm or anyone doing your taxes to see if there's any advantages uh, in that. And um, you could also develop certain um, psychological financial profiles. I don't know what, what I want to call it, but uh, a lot of times people uh, can attack loans in different ways. Okay. So what I call is, you know, the snow snowflake approach is one of them. So what I would do is take your monthly payment and either divide it by two weeks or by four weeks put it on an automatic payment plan every two weeks or every four, four weeks so that you're always carving down that principal balance. Okay, so that's the snowflake approach. You're not going to see it make any difference. Um, and what happens is um, interest accrues on the principal balance daily. So if you're always bringing that principal balance down every seven days or every 14 days, you're better off. Other people approach their student loan debt as taking uh, a, a focus and look on the small uh, student loans and trying to paying those off because it makes them feel better, right, about their finances. So that's, you know, the snowball effect. And then others have the avalanche approach. Let's take the largest loans with the highest uh, interest rate and try to pay them down as much as you can, okay? And then finally, I always um, ask students, students, I'm sorry, graduates, to budget and balance their checkbook every month. Um, you know, if you really want to make huge sacrifices in order to pay your debt down, um, one of the uh, most um, influential ways to do that, I think, impactful, is to not have a debit card. And I know that sounds crazy in this day and age, okay? Or put your debit card away uh, in a safety deposit box or something, uh, because it's very easy to use your debit card to spend money, right? So, um, you know, I, I know that if I go to dinner tonight and uh, my dinner tab is $50, 
uh, it's it's a lot easier for me to put my ATM uh, or my debit card down uh, as opposed to me taking out the cash out of my wallet and putting $50 down on the table, right? That hurts a little bit more for some reason psychologically, and maybe it just makes me more aware of maybe I should be, you know, putting that money towards a student loan. So again, a uh, very drastic way of handling it, but, you know, it's a tip. You don't have to take it. You can leave it. Um, so uh, that's basically it for the presentation. Um, thank you very much. Uh, let's see if there are any questions in the chat. Uh, are federal student loans automatically forgiven after 25 years? Well, again, it depends uh, on the qualifications. Uh, so I would always go to studentaid.ed.gov to make sure you understand that and also talk to the servicer, get it in writing. Um, and oh, question was just answered live. Okay, so we're all set on that. Um, I think that is it. Uh, if uh, Unless anyone has any other questions, I'll be happy to take them now. I don't, I don't see any. And I think we, oh, hold on. Okay, with inflation rising quickly, does that mean that our student loan debts are also decreasing in real dollars? Not quite sure I understand that question. Um, I would assume that they're not decreasing in real dollars. Um, that would just be my uh, from the hip answer. Uh, I'm not an economist, so I'm not quite sure. But one of the things that I would say about this inflation and, and with rates rising quickly, you're going to want to really hone in on your refinance options sooner rather than later. Um, because if credit unions or banks or fintech companies are um, uh, attaching their rates to the prime rate, we know that prime rate will increase again, maybe a couple more times before the end of this year. So if you're looking for a fixed rate loan, now is the time to do it. Um, on the other hand, when you're taking a look at a variable rate product, um, variable rates are usually much lower rates than um, fixed rates. And it might behoove you to explore that depending on how much of a term that you have left to go. Uh, if you have like five years left, um, maybe you would want to take a look at a variable rate because you know that you're going to be paying it off early and the interest rates lower. So you're saving extra money on that payment and you could put extra money on principal. So um, those are the tips that I would, uh, I would give you in this uh, inflation environment. Um, does student loan refinance become more complicated if my employer is contributing uh, to my debt? Um, I don't think so. The only thing that I would uh, ask that you do is go to your HR department, Victoria, and ask them what will happen if you refinance. Uh, does that change anything on their end? I'm I'm just assuming this. I'm assuming that it no, it won't be because they're basing what they're paying out um, based on either your performance or your longevity with the company or whatever have you. Uh, so I, you know, again, my guess is um, I, I would I would definitely ask my HR department. My guess is no, that it wouldn't, but you you never know. Um, Uh, okay. Yes, nursing does qualify. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to um, take that back. Usually, nursing qualifies as public service. It depends on where the hospital is located, or if um, you know. I'm not sure if you're a traveling nurse. Uh, I don't know if that uh, uh, complicates things. But again, I would go to studentaid.gov uh, or reach out to your servicer and ask them um, if if you uh, 
can do that. Now, if your employer is qualified, you're going to have to fill out paperwork with them on a yearly basis and send it into the Department of Education to uh, continue to qualify for public service debt forgiveness. But anyone in the medical industry, I would say absolutely check into it because the chances of you getting into something right now uh, is better than later. So make sure you get it in, make sure you get all your questions answered before the end of October of this year. Um, regarding the snowflake approach, do you pay the minimum payment every two weeks or do you break the two payments down to equal the monthly uh, monthly total every month? So yeah, so if your monthly payment is um, $500 uh, and you get paid bi-weekly, I would take that 500 divided by uh, half. So that's 250 every two weeks. Um, if, um, or, you know, you could do, or you can divide, divide it by four. Uh, that way you're paying extra, you're paying, uh, you're paying down that principal. Therefore, uh, you know, anything extra goes towards that principal balance. So yeah, these are really good questions. And Victoria, they pay up to 20,000. Wow. They are something else then. That is terrific. That's probably one of the higher um, repayments I've seen. Um, you can make your appointment as soon as you go to that co-branded website. Um, she is, you can find um, the her schedule out there. Uh, also uh, email her. So she will take appointments. Now, considering this is peak season for undergraduates, you might have to wait um, a week uh, or so. I, I think at the most, I'm not sure how fast she can turn these um, conferences around. But again, I would absolutely recommend you take the time and talk to her. She has over 30 years experience in the student lending industry. Um, and yes, the website is Dutch point dot student choice dot um oh gosh I forgot it I had it on one, one slide here I apologize hold on it's right here oh Dutch point dot student choice dot org um well that's the refinance side Sammy I know that you're out there you're my wing person I'm, I have brain fog all of a sudden. I know that it's out there. Uh, I'm grabbing it for you. I'll drop it in the chat here in one second. Okay, thank you very much. I'm pretty sure it's Dutch point dot student choice. But yes, she'll definitely drop it in the... Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, any other questions out there? Well, I hope this was helpful for everyone. Um, and, uh, you know, I really enjoy doing these, these uh, seminars for you. Um, so if you have any questions at any time, please reach out to either your credit union, or you can reach out um, to um, Student Choice. We would be more than happy uh, to help you. I believe I have, oops. Yep. Yeah. If you call, uh, if you email scholarhelp at studentchoice.org, we can answer any questions, specific questions that you have. Um, and also, uh, oh, I'm glad, Victoria, that it gives you hope. Good, good. I think, you know, it's it's just a matter of trying to figure out where to go first, right? Um, that's, that's what's so confusing. Uh, so I'm glad that this was helpful for you. And uh, I wish you a go all good weekend. Uh, weekend, evening. I'm thinking that it's Friday. Have a good weekend. I mean, evening. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending. Suzanne, thank you for your time. Sammy, thank you for your help. And everyone have a good evening. Take care. Thank you.